I'm Crystal. Welcome to the EMS Daily Boost. There has always been this nagging thought in the back of my mind when it comes to who I am. Tell me if you can relate. I've never been able to see myself the way I am told God sees me. He says I am precious and I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He says that I am lovely and that he longs to be with me. He says that he has a plan and a purpose for my life. However, even with all this scriptural truth, my heart has a hard time believing it. Why? Satan is the problem. He is a deceiver and a liar. But there is a key to understanding the depth of his schemes. He was a killer at the very start. He couldn't stand the truth because there wasn't a shred of truth in him. When the liar speaks, he makes it up out of his lying nature and fills the world with his lies. Satan used to have the power over death. There was nothing that could completely save people from their sins. There was the law, the Ten Commandments, to guide people and help them stay closer to God. They sacrificed animals to have the blood atone for their sins, but the problem with that is that they had to continually sacrifice because they, like us, continually sinned. But when Jesus came and died, something happened. When you were stuck in your old sin-dead life, you were incapable of responding to God. God brought you alive, right along with Christ. Think of it, all sins forgiven, the slate wiped clean, that old arrest warrant canceled and nailed to Christ's cross. He stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and marched them naked through the streets. I remember growing up and watching David Copperfield, a famous magician. He was a master of illusion. He had no magic powers, but you could believe that he could make an elephant disappear. Satan is the same way after Jesus came and completed what he came to do. Jesus made a public spectacle of Satan by disarming him and taking away his power over death. Satan's only weapon is gone. So what does he have left? The illusion. Illusion is defined, something that deceives by producing a false or misleading impression or reality. Psychologically, it means a perception as a visual stimuli, optical illusion, that represents what is perceived in a way different from the way it is in reality. All Satan has now are tricks and illusions. He tells us lies and persuasions to make us believe a false reality that will lead us away from God and ultimately to our own destruction. He is the deceiver. A deceiver is defined to mislead by a false appearance or statement, to delude to mislead or falsely persuade others to practice deceit. So Satan has no power to do us any harm or damage whatsoever. He can't touch us, he can't read our minds, and he can't even move the things around us to cause us harm. The only thing that he can do is to persuade us that his lies are truth and to lead us to our own destruction by our own choices. We all know that there are things that are required of you to have a happy, healthy relationship with God, reading the word, prayer, and worship. But Satan will do anything that he can to cause us to stay away from those things. For example, your all-time favorite movie that you haven't seen in years, decades even, comes on TV. <clears throat> You've been looking for it everywhere, in all the stores, online, offline, everywhere. 
This might be the once in a lifetime chance to watch it. God won't really mind that much, will he? Now I can almost guess that at least half of you are saying, of course he wouldn't. It's a once in a lifetime thing. There's grace for that, right? Okay, so here's the next question. What about tomorrow? Tomorrow, you get up with every intention of spending extra time in the Word to make it up to God. When you get to the table with your coffee and your Bible open and a phone rings, it's your best friend and she has all the news from the neighbors and she found out about the big fight that Ruth and George had two days ago. You spend an hour and a half on the phone before you realize what time it is and say goodbye and rush to get dressed to head to your hair appointment. Bible, still unread. Satan is right there. He's there with his lies, telling you that God won't miss you for just one day. He's there distracting you with the latest gossip. Slowly and stealthily, Satan steals your days with God until suddenly you realize it's been a week, a month, or even a year since you even gave God the time of day. There are also the lies of justification of sins. I'm going to use the procrastination justification because that's one I have been fluent in throughout my life. We all have the list of responsibilities in our lives, it's things that we are all required to do to or accomplish to make sure that our families and ourselves are taken care of and live a happy, healthful, and successful life. We wake up with these lists ready. We know what we are to do by the end of the day, but we get up, drink our coffee, and the enthusiasm starts to leave us. The pile of laundry downstairs is all of a sudden so much work. So we decide to leave it for tomorrow. I have too much on my plate to tackle that today, we say. The sludge layer in the bathtub isn't that bad. That can wait until tomorrow too. I haven't talked to my friend Martha on Facebook in a couple days. I'll just see if she is online. She had a bad cough. It's my friendly duty to check on her. Three hours later. All of a sudden, the list of things to do is diminished to getting dinner ready and getting the kids in bed. On the way to bed, we hang our heads thinking of the incomplete to-do list. Then we start listing the things that were more important. Keep a cool head. Stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better than to catch you napping. He will steal every bit of us that can keep us in a right relationship with God, our spouses, our family. He lies to us and tells us things that entice our selfish tendencies. I've been sucked into it more times than I would care to admit, but to be aware causes us to be able to see it when it comes up next time. Over thousands of years, he has become an expert in the business of illusion. He is the ultimate trickster, but that is all he is. So how do we combat Satan at his own game? There are thousands of ways that Satan lies to us, but there is only one way to stay out of his trap of deception. Truth. Then you will experience for yourselves the truth, and the truth will free you. Staying in the Word and in a close relationship with God through prayer and worship is the only way to know and stay in the truth. Think about it. Are there any lies in God? God sent Jesus to take away our sin, to free us to be able to see the truth of who he is and the lies of Satan. It started when God said, Light up the darkness and our lives filled up with light as we saw and understood God in the face of Christ, all bright and beautiful. So like I said before in one of my examples, Satan steals away our time with God so that we cannot see the light. He wants us to remain in the dark. 
They think he can give them what they want and that they won't have to bother believing a truth they can't see. They're stone blind to the day spring brightness of the message that shines with Christ, who gives us the best picture of God will ever get. Satan knows the truth is our greatest weapon against his illusions. So let's make Satan squirm and strengthen our weapons against him and do all we can to spend our time in God's word, developing that relationship of truth. No more tricks and no more illusions.